Super pumped, I'm excited. Mike O'Hearn, four-time Mr. Universe. Mm, yeah, Been on yeah. like a gazillion covers, right? I think like a million or something, I've a last count. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of covers. <laughs> and then the most amazing thing, and I cannot believe that you did this, is a Guinness World Record holder for doing what? Uh, running through panes of glass. Running through panes of glass. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a wild one. It was a good <laughs> phone call. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> so welcome. I, I'm excited. And by the way, thank you for inviting us into your lovely home here thank in uh, L.A. It's, it's fantastic. And You're in the castle. In the castle. With the I dire love wolves. It. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So we have uh, Striker over striker here. Striker in the back where you guys can't see him. Uh, oh, there you go. There's a little Striker. Uh, beautiful, beautiful husky. I mean, it looks like it's a purebred. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's just. We got two huskies. We have a timber wolf, and then we have a, uh, a beautiful chow. Wow, yeah. that so, is awesome. So it's a house full of animals. <laughs> obviously, Mona's the main animal. <laughs> <laughs> she's the main uh, animal, and, and obviously the prettiest one here. So. Nice to have you, Mona. Oh, all right, Mona. Why don't you? A pose. There you Strike go, a man. Pose. Look at there this girl. you go. Yeah, there you oh. go. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna cover up my arms now. <laughs> you at least you know, come on, man. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, all right, so let, let's let's talk. Let, let's right. find out what have you been up to. Let's first of all let's let's talk about innovate. Oh yeah, innovate. So, so we talked about uh, we caught up a little bit uh, in March. You were just starting innovate at that point. Yeah. And. Um, so catch us up, what's going on? Uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, you never know on businesses. Uh, you know, I have a moral belief that the industry was going too far one way. Um, and what I mean by that is, is we are about health. Or at least I, I, you know, it, it should be, or I am about health and about longevity. Um, I always wanted to be a champion. I wanted to be a champion that day, but I knew it would take time. Uh, so I'll fight every day to be a champion, but it takes time. And something that I saw the, the supplement industry was doing was going away from my background is when I, when I was a kid, I started this. Right. And um, with everything that's available nowadays, I want those kids to be able to do what they can and be better than me. Um, there's so much more science, there's so much more creation. And the industry was going crazier and crazier because I was hearing about, uh, and I was working for companies that were like, um, yeah, yeah, fat burner, the, these, these fat burners or the pre-workouts now are for college kids so they can do so much and stay up all night studying. Mm. And they're so amped. And I'm like, all right, so this is, it's supposed to be able to, you know, hype you up, um, build some muscle, make sure that you can retain that energy through a workout. Right. But staying up for 24, 36 hours, that is not... Beneficial. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like, wow, you, you, you're breaking somebody now. And right. And I know, because uh, I'm one of these guys that will, I'm an extremist. And so if, if there's something there and that's available, kids today will do it. Sure, and sure. Go, if you, this makes me so hyped. Uh, I'll squat a thousand pounds, I'll do it. And so my belief was, I, all right, stop, I'm done with that. I'm gonna go back to the basics and make something clean, something uh, healthy that the Olympic athletes can now use, that the NFL players can use now. Um, and something that everybody else was going away from because they want the mass. Right. And they want it now. You want it mass, or they want it now. Just make the cheapest product that can you can turn and burn and get everybody addicted right. to it. And I said, all right, I want the people that really want to be healthy and have a long career. And the people that go, you know, this is why I do it because this gets me through the workout and it helps me achieve what I want, but it doesn't burn out my receptors and it doesn't crash me all day. Because it's you and me are not these guys that go to the gym and go, that's all that matters today. Right. No, no, no. Gym is just foundation work. Right. It's just that's one part one, of what, yeah. That's an hour a day, guys. We got a whole day of creating our legacy and our lives. And, right. And I wanted people to go, okay, I got a great workout in. Good. Now I can continue the day and not be burnt out and not destroy my body. Um, and so me and my partner, Heath Evans, um, we, we, we did the study and we did the work and we created something clean that parents can now buy for their kids. Right. And go, I trust this. There's no banned substance in it. Uh, um, Olympic athletes and, and uh, you know the testing on that. The right. A lot of testing is incredible. Um, so that's what we did. We created that. Now here's the thing. This is a long winded story, <laughs> but there's a point for this. It's cool that society loved it. Right. And they jumped on it. And within 
five months now we're getting offers that people want to buy us out already wow and i'm like what the i'm like first of all crazy that we're worldwide already in that short period of time and, and then now people are coming to try to buy us out so it makes me proud that the morals i believed in health and fitness and he believed in in health and fitness created something that the majority of society again would like right and, and um that's just that's mind-blowing brings tears to my eyes that i created something in this sense and with this great team around me we all did this and it's going as well as it is cool so i'm blown away that's fantastic i know it's not just that's just a supplement company but it's it's the whole concept of my principles and beliefs so right. it, it was so much more than that well and, you know and this is the thing that's important uh is finding something that you can get passionate about i mean you've been in the fitness industry since what 12 15, uh, 1919 right after the model t <laughs> was made so you know <laughs> and so here you are years later you're still excited about it you're still passionate about it you're still trying to make a difference in it and that says a lot about again your beliefs about your passion for it and i think that some people just do it for the money which is okay sometimes you know do something for the money money is important but it's also good to get excited about it and say look i've made a difference i know that i can give this product to high school kids and they're not going to get messed up yeah so that's and, good and, congratulations that's the truth and then uh, uh i think with what you do and what i do and what mona does is is that whole concept that warren buffett had if money was not an issue um what would you do right and, and and do that with love and passion and then you will money will come right and so i never got up at three in the morning uh to train at four in the morning even when i was nine ten and eleven you know with the paper route and working out with my brothers and then going to school i never did that for money because i didn't have no comprehension of money at nine ten years old right um so and that just continued so even today with the vitamin company it was more about doing something against the grain and as everybody is 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 standing in line over here right. going i'm gonna make this more cracked out than this guy's product <laughs> and trust me you're gonna be beyond crazy on this guy's product i said wow why what triggers in me and my partners and stuff so different that it's a small crew going, we're going over here. Right. Um, and that's passion. Yeah. It, it feels well, good. And, and it's also good business because, you know, the, the, there's a, what do you call it, a, a trend in marketing, right? That if everybody's going this way, then if you want to stand out, you go the opposite direction. And people say, hey, why is he doing differently? W what's going on, right? And so it makes people look. Because if you're trying to compete with everybody who's doing all the crazy stuff, then you're just one other person in the sea of stuff. And, and every, I mean, every month, somebody's coming out with a crazier product um, with these crazy claims. And, you know, and, and I, part of that I get because we all want to get, as fit or as big or whatever as quickly as possible but as you said what was that about being a champion but it takes time it's it, right you want to be a champion every day but it takes time and, yeah. and uh i wish i first of all to your your statement about marketing i wish i was that bright in marketing that i knew <laughs> that that was the concept i'm not i'm telling you right now i'm not that marketing genius um i i i just really just felt the heart and, and, and working with the crew around me we were like what is it that kept me in the game longer than anybody else? Right. Why is it that when I first got on stage, Samir Banute was Mr. Olympia? Wow. Which, which most of the yeah. guys most will go. Most don't even know who that name is. What was yeah. that? I yeah. don't even. So to think that that's when I was, and now I'm still on stage almost every single weekend. Right. Still, I would think if you're going to the gym and, 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 you're, and you're putting in seven days a week on the diet and you're doing all this, the muscle and the healthiness that you get, you would want to keep. Yeah. And it seems as though uh, everybody just wants to be a champion for a day. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just, I don't care. I'm 21 by 22 on oh, me freaking jack. Give me yeah. everything. Yeah. And I'm like, man, life's so much more than a, and than that one trophy. Right. And how many people do we know that win trophies? Right, right. And But you know what, to your point, how many people do we know who become a professional gifted athlete and that is all they're known for? And once they stop being 
that gifted athlete, they disappear. Sometimes they go bankrupt and you never hear from them again. As opposed to somebody who can do this and this and this and this and they have this longevity. And, and you know, so, you know, you can still do the, the muscle, the, the cover, uh, the modeling, the acting. Now, you know, business. I mean, that's what it takes to be a champion, right? He's making me look good. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. We're just staying here all day. That's it. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And, and I wish more people would go, I want to be jacked for a lifetime. And I don't know why I, I, I felt like I was alone in the world saying that. Right. Where everybody else goes, I'm going to win this show next year. And they just do everything for that show. And they, everything else is burnt out. Right. And I know tunnel vision. And I'm not saying I don't have tunnel vision. I do. I can focus on something. I can win the shows. I've won powerlifting meets, martial arts meet, uh, competitions, um, bodybuilding shows. So I did that, but I still kept the idea that every brick I built, I need to make sure that brick stays there. And I can't build all this stuff up to two weeks off and it all disappears, or I'm taking stuff and it's all going to disappear, or right. the way I live my life, I can't maintain. I don't understand that concept. Right. And I don't either. I, I really don't. Uh, I, I, again, I'm just like you. I can get hyper-focused. And I think everybody can, right? You, this is what you want to do. You're focused on this. You're coming up with a show. You want to get focused on that. But like you were saying, it's, it's beyond that. Because you can only do certain things for a certain amount of time. And if you don't have the next project, then... Again, as I said before, you're going to disappear. All right, so let's talk about this because we have all this glorious stuff in the <laughs> background here. And I'm going to start with, um, I, I got to start with this. World's finest. Look oh at this. Oh my gosh. Can you guys get a, a whole load of this? So we have Mike O'Hearn as Superman. By the way, I thought this was spectacularly Thank well you. done. Thank you. And, and then your buddy Clark, here. Clark Bartram. Clark Bartram. Yeah. And uh, so is this... This, Fun, is project, this, how, this is a project we did that was um, it was the most downloaded downloaded and watched thing ever on YouTube at the time. We did a, a project called World's Finest. World's uh, Finest. Yeah, with a director uh, Sandy Calora, and it uh, it exploded. And it's funny because this was a basically a teaser that we did that it blew up the internet. That got me in for the audition for Warner Brothers uh, on. Uh, Superman. Oh, really? They got me down to the final five guys, and they were like, "We love you. We love you for Superman. You're a great <laughs> Superman." But we were gonna go with this other guy because he does a great Clark Kent, and um, and I was like, it, "It's all about that fight and the battle of trying right. to get in there." So right. it was nice that the work I did and the acting I did, they they loved it, and we got that close. Yeah. No, I like that. I like so. that. And and uh, I don't make sure it doesn't. All right, stay, <laughs> stay. All right, and so. Um, then we have your uh, this this awesome. Oh my girl! Oh. Yeah. So that is my chow. That's my baby. Long story. She is still here. Uh, she is almost 18 years old. Wow. You ready for this? So she and uh, her sister Bunny were my first two dogs after college and after coming to California and everything. Um, they were my first grown-up dogs. Okay. Uh, and the great thing about these two was that. Uh, they were there, uh, the high points and the low points. They were there when I lost both my mom and lost my dad. They, uh, through relationships, um, and, and then just the highs and lows of television and then working and, you know, losing television shows and so on and so forth. But it's, uh, she's still here. And I think when people go, hey, so what's up with you and the dogs and stuff like that? I think with anybody, there are uh, people that change or want to be better Okay, keep it together. <laughs> uh, sorry. There's, there's people that want to be better because of something. Right. It could be a person, a thing, uh, a religion, I hope, in a good way. Um, they were and are something I wanted to be better and mimic, in a sense. Right. I wanted to be somebody that you would come into the house and go, I want to see that person. That person has great energy. Right. Um, we're losing her now. And she's on her final leg, uh, which tears me apart, obviously. So, right. right. Um, you want me to bring her in? She's here. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I wish more people would 
be open like that and be right. cool like that and th that aspect of it that they find something that makes them want to be better yeah so well you know what's interesting too because um it just so happens the other day i forgot what the the entire conversation was about but we got talking about how wouldn't it life wouldn't the world be better if we could all be more like dogs in the sense that very accepting, very forgiving. You know, I mean, I, so I have a little dog, a little uh, Mia or a little toy dog. And so she goes on the same walk with me every day and she's super excited. Super excited you know, about the same Let's, we're going for a walk. You know, I mean, wouldn't it, how incredible would life be if we could, if we could be that enthusiastic about doing something we've already done. Okay, we're gonna go to work. Oh my God, let's go, let's go. You know, and then, when, and then if I go away and I come back, She's all over me, you know, it's like, oh my. But as humans, we get so accustomed to everything yep. that instead of greeting you with, you know, enthusiasm, it's, hey, it's good to see, you know, whatever, or, or a not, you know, and it's just, it, life would be different. The world would be uh -huh. different if we were all. I got a question for you. Good. What is the one thing that you think you need to work on in life? What is that one aspect? I would say, I, I, you know, it's interesting because I was going to, I had that on my, uh, I, 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 ask Mike, I'll tell so you mine, okay, I'll tell right. you mine. So I would say my thing that I'm constantly working on is being more open, okay. right? Um, because we have limited time, I want to be open enough to be able to tell people how I feel and, 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 and be able to appreciate them because before you know it, those people are gone. We had uh, a situation with uh, one of our, um, uh, one of my daughter's friends, um, they went on a, uh, a uh, church-related event. It was um, uh, repelling. Right. And so everybody had a great time. On the way back, the lady um, that was uh, carpooling uh, some of the girls back, there was f four vehicles, I believe, she fell asleep at the wheel. Oh, no. and, it, and, it, and it crashed, and their friend passed away. And so in an instant, life changed for them, for that family. And so we go around thinking we have oh, time and life is, you know, wonderful. We don't have time. We're, you know, this could be the last time we see each other because we don't know what's going to happen after this. So anyway, so that's the thing I'm working on is, is trying to be more in that moment and, and just being more uh, open about it, more loving about it. Uh, just, uh, ex you know, just that. It's... it's so we're basically kind of, it's, it's weird, the, the similarity in that sense, because I've done some lectures and a lot of guys that were elite people that just, they've succeeded in what they're doing. Right. Um, me and Phil Heath, we were giving a lecture together, and he, same thing. It's living in the moment. Yes. And I am the worst about living in the moment because it's, I won the Mr. Universe. Great, awesome. By that night, I was already thinking about the next thing. Skipped it. Uh, I won the California powerlifting, uh, judo. Um, even when I got inducted in the Hall of Fame for martial arts, it was like, all right, great, what's next? I gotta right. keep going, I gotta keep turning. You, did you know, somebody else is on my tail. I gotta right. make sure I'm... I'm, I'm... And, and before you know it, a year or two years or five years goes by and you're like, oh my gosh, I did that. But I didn't really enjoy that moment. I was already moving on it. Dogs, for me, mostly my dogs, is, is something that makes me say, stop, slow down. Yeah. I know something happened. I know this is going on in your life right now, but now I'm here, take a moment. And, and I try to utilize that, and I try to do that more. It's just living in the freaking moment like they do. It's yeah. like it, it, if you're talking to somebody, put your phone down. Talk to somebody. Just right. interact. Um, you know, it's... That's the one thing I'm terrible about, and that's why I, I, I love that aspect of animals and people that can do that. People that can just slow down, stop, and just yeah. go, let's just, you and me right now, let's just, that kind of thing, just, it's... It's amazing. I, um, so uh, uh, one of the uh, great moments about being in the moment, um, Tony Robbins. So uh, I'm wow. backstage with Tony wow. Robbins. You're and, lucky man. And, and so <laughs> Tony, uh, this is the only time I've ever met him, and it was, you know, for like a brief second or two, right? I mean, right. it wasn't more than maybe 25 seconds. We, you know, he said hello, and we exchanged a few pleasantries. But his focus on me 
was on you. It was on me as like, Tony, stop. I mean, you know, you're, you're <laughs> making, making me, me feel too good. You're, yeah. <laughs> you kiss me? Yeah. But he was so like, in that moment, I've never experienced that from anybody. He was that. just like, wow. And then when it was time for him to go, hey, I got to go. I'm sorry. It was great to meet you. But, and, and he says, great to meet you, Bert. I mean, he knew my name. He tried, you know, he made that effort. But out of all the people that I've ever met, that was the guy who stands out where he was this like laser beam in my face. And it's like, wow, that takes skill. Be able to be that present, to be able to be uh, that aware and not distracted. And that's the thing, right now you're backstage with him. He's getting pulled a hundred different yes. ways. There's thousands of people there that see him. Yes. And he's focused on you and you guys are alone. In, yes. a, sense, in a sense, even you're alone in a, in a filled room. Yes. Which is the coolest That's a great description. That's exactly what it was. It's like for that, those whatever seconds, I'm like, oh my gosh. It's a cool feeling, huh? It is, it is. It's like incredible, I'm telling you. And, and I thought, man, that's what I'd like to emulate. To be able to make your special someone feel that good, yeah. you know, to make your kids feel that good, uh, when you're talking to whoever and make them feel like that, that is incredible. So that's that's what I'm trying Take to do. Take away that from this interview, if anything <laughs> else. Uh, 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 my beliefs and training and this and that are so minute to living in the moment and taking that time because you, you said it. We only got so much time. Right, right. And, and stop wasting that. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. Nope. You, are, you got uh, millions of followers, okay. uh, TV shows, movies. Uh, uh, we talked about the gazillion covers you've been on. Uh, people recognize you all over the place. Uh, as you said, you're on stage almost every week. How do you not become egotistical about that? How do you keep yourself kind of grounded? Is that, you know, so, so yeah, talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I think like a lot of people, uh, when I, I'm glad I got done with a lot of stuff young. Um, I, and I nobody got, found it on the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I got to California. I was brought down by Joe Weider. Okay. Um, I've been lifting and living this lifestyle and this mentality um, forever. So it bleeds in me. Um, but I got to California and I made some money and I made it quick because of TV shows, because of covers, because of endorsements. Um, I was the hot kid, you know what I mean? And, right. and, and uh, I, I got caught up in the hype. I believed my own hype. Is right, what I right. Mean. You, your own and, press and, clippings, and, as they say, and, right? And when a, a rookie or those kind of people, they believe their own hype, they think they're a little above everybody else. Um, nothing can damage you. Right. So, well, I was doing that. I was making money. I was making money. So I, I, I made my first million by the time I was 24. Um, and I had a father figure down here, very, very bright guy, um, investment banker, this, that, and the other thing. Um, so uh, he goes, hey, you know what, just you know, give me the money, I'll, I'll uh, invest it and do all that stuff. Ups and skips town, takes my first million. Whoa! Um, <laughs> that being said, uh, crushed me. Right, right. Shucked my ego. Right. Um, and uh, at this time also, uh, my, my dad um, had cancer. And he said, okay, so here's the scoop. I'm dying, but you're dead. Because mm. I let that destroy me and uh, uh, destroy everything around me. Um, right. The girl I was with at that time destroyed that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a kid. I say, how somebody can take a million dollars from you? And when let he me, said let me, that... Let me interject and say, I mean, if that was to happen to, I don't care what age, but especially when you're <laughs> so young. And at that age, money means a lot more, yeah. especially a million dollars. That... In, in most people's dreams is success. And then, of course, you have a good friend of yours, as you said, a father figure, betray you, so you lose two things in one. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a disbelief in people. Right. Um, the, the, where you can't trust anybody, which sucks. That's a, that's a terrible feeling. Um, and then it was my first million. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, obviously, I, I kind of destroyed my life in a sense, but um, when he said that to me, uh, that woke me up. He said those words to me, and I said, yeah, "You're right." He goes, um, "He says it's not a man that makes a million dollars. A true man is a man that can make a million, lose it, and make it back again." 
but you can't give up on your life right now. You right. are dead and you're a kid and you got opportunities. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. This world is that way. <laughs> um, Welcome to the human above, race. Yeah, you're not above anybody. <laughs> yeah. and, and uh it was a, a reality check and it was like it was the truth i mean it was a hard truth to learn yeah, yeah i didn't yeah. need that lesson it's honestly a million dollar uh, tuition need, there right <laughs> i didn't need that lesson um and it it just it, it triggered and and i said stop believing your hype the hype is for everybody else yeah yeah if people think i'm great cool that's their opinion right uh, it has nothing to do with me in a sense um if i won because because really as you grow <laughs> grow more, uh, you get to a place where it's not the titles that mean anything. I don't care that I'm, I got the most covers next to Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is a cool thing. Right. But again, that's just a thing. And it, and it, and it doesn't mean anything compared to somebody saying, uh, today I was talking to somebody and, and they go, I met somebody that knows you and you spent one minute with them and they've known it. For three years ago, you met them for one minute and they said, you're just the nicest guy. And I said, that meant more to me at this stage in my life. It right. just means more. And going through life, you realize that it, it's, not the, it's not the nice cars and houses and all that. That's great. But again, it, it's not for you to look down on other people and it's not for you to flaunt in that sense. It, it means more when you're a nice person. And I, I know people and there's people in my circle that have nothing are the nicest people right they can still go through life and going I'm, I'm fighting but i'm happy i'm happy every day i'm up and appreciate life that's what i learned with that lesson that yeah. you appreciate life it means more than anything sure um and my dad was right i was dead at the time and i went out and i made it again and again and again and that meant more to me as a person that it didn't destroy me it made me stronger and a better person right um and, and also, it's a gift that you lose it at 24 yep. versus 74. 100%. You know, because at least I don't it, recommend ever for <laughs> anybody to do that, but I'm just saying. Yeah, um, uh, that's, I, yeah it's a great story. Okay. I, I, I just, it doesn't make sense to be egotistical or think you're great or this or that because this is all gone. Right. This is gone the next day. Right. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. All right. So, so you're from where? Kirkland, Washington. Kirkland, so it's, uh, okay. Kirkland, Washington. Bill Gates, Costco, Microsoft, Michael Hearn, not in that order. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and so now you've been out in California how long? Uh, 27 years. Wow. Yeah. Man. Time flies. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. All right. So again, we have Mona here from Romania. <laughs> and you That's guys, a whole story. Yeah, That's so a whole story. She was telling story. us, you guys met through the Arnold. We did. Um, she uh, was a former editor in chief of Muscle and Fitness Hers, and uh, um, she was this. And here's the funny story. I'm this kind of guy um, because I came from a family that uh, raised nine kids. Uh, my parents didn't raise us in a sense. They they said, "Listen, you mess up, it's on you. You're gonna have to deal with the consequences. We got too many kids to take care. Yeah. I don't got time to baby you." <laughs> yeah, really. So they were very, um, very just live your life do right. your thing but you know you get in a street fight like we did and then get arrested um we'd call them and go hey you gonna come and bail me out nope nope you know what you did <laughs> so growing up like that and having that kind of thing i was like i'm never gonna tape, date this kind of tough kind of woman and all this and so i met this girl and she's running the magazines i knew that and hot girl and and i'm trying to talk to her and stuff she's very mm. <laughs> One of these girls, I ain't talking to you. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on now. Uh, and I couldn't well, get through see, that a, show. a hot girl, you know, surrounded by hot guys all the time. I mean, you know. Yeah, self-made. Um, yeah, so I, I, I tried to talk to her and stuff like that and got shut down. Um, but then she invited me to some of the uh, Arnold um, parties and stuff. Said, hey, we'd like you to be there for muscle and fitness and all that. And we got to talking and I, I saw the softer side. <laughs> I, I got in there and <laughs> met the little sweetheart. So I got lucky. I met her, and then uh, we've been dating ever since. That's cool. That is cool. Three years now? Four years? Three, Three years. years. That is awesome, man. That's cool. All right. So uh, let's talk mindset. Yeah. Uh, and because I like this phrase, uh, we want to be a champion today, today. but it but takes. But you need to know it takes time. Yeah, and, and that right there is mindset, right? That that is prep. All right. So 
when you are, let's say, getting ready to go to the gym, getting ready to go on stage, maybe you're you know, dealing with uh, a, a deal that went bad, you know, an obstacle, do you have like a mantra for these occasions? Do you have a, a slogan, uh, you know, uh, an affirmation uh, that, you know, like that you may repeat like when you're getting ready to go to the gym or to help to deal with crap? Yeah. Uh like everybody, your motivation and your goals and everything change with life. Right. You meet a person, you fall in love, now your goals are all changed. Right. Now it's something else. Um, the one thing that I can keep in the forefront of my mind is that 14-year-old kid that walked on stage. When I walked on stage and said, this is the coolest thing in the world, this is what I love, um, and I want to continue this. And, and, and being a fan of Bruce Lee and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Muhammad Ali, and wanting to combine those guys and going, right. I want to be a, a bit of everybody. Right, right. Um, there's that kid still in the forefront of my mind. Um, so I always drop back and, and meditate or take my time before I go on stage or when I wake up and go to the gym every morning. It's a surreal moment to where I feel like I'm still that kid going to do it. And I, regardless of how bad the day is or, or what's going on in life, I can still wake up and, and pull that image and, and, and be in that, you know, shoes of that kid right. walking into the gym every day. And it's a, it's a great thing to be able to hold on to and have, to have that memory that it's so strong still today. That's awesome. I love that. I, and what time do you get to the gym? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Why? I mean, you don't have to. Why four o'clock? Oh. Why not five? Why not ten? Why not seven? Yeah. Three in the afternoon. Um, we go to sleep, uh, we're in bed by eight, asleep by nine, up at three, six hours of sleep. Um, we train at four o'clock till six o'clock. Then we work from six o'clock till eight o'clock, seven days a week. Seven days seven a week. week. Yeah. Um, we have about four days in town, Monday through Thursday. We fly out Fridays, uh, guest pulls on Saturday, give lectures on Sunday and fly back and do it again the following week. Wow. Yeah. Um, and we've been doing this and so... There's a couple reasons why the 4 a.m. First of all, we can't find time during the day, during the day to do this. Uh, obviously, our careers have transformed from what we were doing to uh, commercial real estate and properties. And so there's a lot of stuff we have to take care of, not just the gym. And I'm not the kind of guy that believes that the gym, put this in a nice way, the gym is your time. Right. And, and, and for me, it's a foundation work. So... I need to be able to do that, but I can't take away from important things. Continuous building the legacy or taking care of work or responsibilities I have, um, running a company now. So I can't take time away in the middle afternoon to do that. For me, right. this is just for me, for my belief. Even though it's my company and this and that, I won't take time away during the day because I can do work with other people. Right. You can't do anything from four or six in the morning with anybody else. All right. Unless I'm doing something in New York, you know what I mean? Right. And, right. and most of them are not still at work. That's right. So at, at that time, you'll never miss a workout for me. Um, and it's my time. And I, Tony Robbins is one of these guys who will say, the first thing you should probably do, and it's great that I did this before the fact, before he said it, is get up, take time, meditation, uh, whatever it is. Um, take your time. And that is my time. And I don't like looking at a clock when I work out. I am not one of these guys that says, hey, how long do you go to the gym for? I have no idea. I get there at four and I leave when I leave. Um, it's just, it's my time. It sets me up for a day to conquer the day. I get a great workout in, never miss a workout. You'll never hear, hey, I missed it. I had a business meeting or this or that, or I was traveling or this or that. We still fly out on the days we work out. So there's no misses. Right. I like that. I like that. And, you know, the other benefit to being there at four o'clock in the morning is your mind is totally fresh. I mean, I can tell you uh, the few times when I've altered my morning workout and decided to go a little bit later in the afternoon cause, because I was trying to do something or getting ready to fly out or whatever, I am not mentally available because I have other things I'm thinking about. I'm thinking of, you know, okay, I got to do this, I got to do that, blah, blah, blah. As opposed to if I would have just gotten up, hit the gym at my regular time, which for me, I get up at 4.30, I'm in the gym by 5. 
I have a great workout because I'm 100% clear, it's all fresh, and as you said, it's foundational. Man, you have a great workout, it just ble just bleeds day. into the rest of the day. Whole day. It's, it's fantastic. And then you're like probably us. Uh, if you ever have an off day, you don't need to train, and you get to sleep in, and you sleep in until whenever, and you wake up, it's, it's days are so short for us, and, and we go, we don't like these short days. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. It's like we, we enjoy getting up and going, all right, we're done with our workouts, we're showered up, ready for work, it's 7 a.m., we got the whole day. Right. And it feels so good, it feels like Christmas every day. It's like, all right, we got the whole day to kick ass and, and, and build and build and build. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because we like what we do, actually we love what we do, we got no problem going seven days a week and people go, no, 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 life's short, you gotta take some time for you. What are you talking about? Every We're day, doing, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you have no idea what this is like and they go, well, wait a minute, six hours of sleep, you're not recovering. Here's a question for you. Now this is just a health question. Um, you need sleep to recover. Absolutely. And that's the best thing for you. All right, so I'm gonna give you a guy that sleeps 10 hours a day. Right, okay. Then he gets up and he has to go to work and he hates his boss and it's a job and he's gotta be there at 8.30 and he doesn't get done until 5.30 he hates his job. Then he gets home and he's tired and he's got everybody yelling at him and then he's gotta go back to bed and get up and do it again. But he gets 10 hours of sleep. Right. So is he grown better than the guy that gets six hours of sleep, me, that wakes up going, I'm freaking, I'm excited about today. I feel great, healthy, go to the gym, get my workout in, let's have fun today, stay on the meal plan. So who's technically growing more? Right. Who's recovering? Right. Because you're building up a lot of, you know, cortisol and everything else going to this job you don't like, even though you get your sleep. And I'll tell you, I've been able to continuously get better and better and understand my body even more and more as I get older and older. And, and, and get to the point of where, and this happens for everybody, it's gonna be a cool thing for you guys. When you get to the point where you don't care right. about people's opinion of you. Oh man, that's the best. Doing, that when you is get really, there, holy sheesh, life is a one big fun story. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't like you, I don't like how your hair is, or I don't like your face. Cool deal, man, have a good day. Yeah, All right, man. I'm gonna go over here. And uh, I, I mean, you gotta love that. You gotta yeah. love it when you get to that stage in life where you're like, you're just enjoying and, you, and, and you're, you got the circle of friends around you, you're living life and, and regardless of how bad it gets, you're still okay. Yeah, you're yeah. Still that is a great day. And man, if, if there's anything that I could, you know, what do you call it, transfer to my kids would be to get them to that point quicker better faster because it's so how freeing you, how, how 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 would you do that you know the only way you can do it is uh, you know the only way i try to do it is by telling them don't you know you can't worry about other people's opinions and and i think that social media as great as social media is i think it's very corrosive in that way because people can like or dislike you or diss you or whatever and i think that too many kids get involved about how many likes i got and that transfers to them that, hey, that's, that's me personally, they're not liking or they are liking. I've had, uh, I've had uh, so I have a total of five kids, two are left at home and, and, and they're twins. And the great thing about twins is that they're, everybody, you know, they're their best friends, they're constantly, uh, you know, uh, we call it surrounded by uh, their, their best buddy there. And every now and then they will get a friend who says, hey, you didn't like my post, and, they, and that friend gets offended that my twins didn't like their post. It's like, life, I mean, that's a terrible place to be at at such a young age that you care that much about other people's opinions. It, yeah, I, I mean, there's a whole bunch that you just said there that my mind's going in three different ways because of the fact that um, obviously, this person's a much better person than with me. They have two million followers. Right, right, right. Um, their photos get you know a, a gazillion likes, likes. Yeah. likes and, and so I got two likes. So I must be doing something. It's like no, no, no. It's just it, it's a it's a different world that we live in today. And and to get to that point now with social media and like you said, it's the interaction is so much more. Right. You can talk to somebody all around the world now with a split second. Um, but to find belief in yourself and to believe truly in yourself and, and what you stand for in a faster way. I know because we're working on our first uh, little superhero. Um, we're, we're planning to follow your footsteps and have a little run. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, congratulations. But I'm just sitting, we're, we're, I was 
the ages of you know one telephone in the house. Um, yes. For fun, you're going to go in the street and play football and, and get slammed up against a car. <laughs> um, you know uh, that that mom and dad are going to slap you across the face. You did something wrong. Right, you can't right. do that today. <laughs> you know, it's like it's such a different world. Think about it like this. Oh uh, my gosh. There's this comedian who brought this up. He says there's a whole generation of kids who have never had dog crap, uh, you know, who, who have never played in a field and gotten dog, dog crap, crap on their feet. Right. And I think it was uh, Jeff Foxworthy who's talking about this. Oh he says there's gosh. a whole generation of kids who have never had that problem. Yeah. Cause, but that was part of, of getting out there. You're getting out there, playing some football, yeah. and having fun, and getting in scuffs. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a different world. It's, uh, what was it, Einstein that said, as soon as the technology passes up our own intelligence, we're going to be raising idiots. Right. And that sucks. Yeah. Because with more <coughs> knowledge, you, with so much more knowledge available, you would hope that they would even get more and more intelligent and, and be able to interact. Um, but the people we talk to and the friends that we're, we're around, the things that you don't think about that you have to do, you got to take the phones away because now kids don't even look at each other. They no. can't interact with each other because they're here the whole time. The whole and so time. They're odd, they're, and I was an odd kid and I couldn't talk to people. I was a loner. So I, I couldn't talk to girls when I was young. And, and when I went back to my class reunion, all the girls uh, said, well, we didn't understand him because he was so shy. And I was like, what? You guys all like, I was like, wow, I didn't even, but I was so shy. And I can't even imagine how much more they are today in that right. sense. Because they're so in tune to their phones and, and that growing up that way. So I, that's a weird, we went off on a subject there, but it's just, it's a different world we live in. It's, Social media can be great. Yep. Um, it's unfortunate that there's all the side effects of, of like and dislikes. Right. And, and there's that cyberbullying thing that, that just, you know, which boggles my mind that people can actually bully you over the internet. And, and again, I understand people can be mean, but you can turn it off. And, and, and but people just don't, that they just, they focus on it. And I think that what happens to a lot of this generation, that they, this is the thing that I think a lot of people miss, is that they have to be good at something. Right. I mean, you achieve a certain level of good or excellence in your field. And and you again, you, you've leveraged that not only in the health and fitness, but on the, the covers, the movie, the acting. And so um, you're going to have a uh, what do you call it, a, a deeper level of followers than the kid who is hasn't done anything yet or the person who's out there that that is maybe this close to breaking wide open. They're just not there yet. And, and I think that, uh, you know, there, people get so hung up on the shortcut. I want to get yeah. 2 million followers. Well, what are you doing to get that? Well, I'm, I'm on Facebook 100 times a day or I'm on Twitter 100 times a day or whatever on Instagram. But that, that's not value as opposed to a guy who spent how many years since the age of 14 doing what you're doing. Yeah. That's value. People can see that. And, and, and I think a lot of kids miss that, that, yeah. that you have to... The, the world will reward you handsomely for value. And, and so, you know, uh, as an actor, when you're in front of, you know, when you're on the big screen or on the, or on the little screen, but you're delivering value to millions of people, you're being rewarded. But it takes time to get there. You, you know, um, very few people are, at least that I know of, are discovered because they have a million followers on YouTube or on well, or on media, it's the, they they've done something to get there first. In other words, you don't get the million the million followers first. You have to deliver the value first. That's all I was trying to say. I, no, no, I agree with you. Um, I agree with you in one sense. Uh, unfortunately, on the other sense, I got to disagree because there are people getting discovered because they got two million followers and they're from Iowa and they're good looking or or, or something. And there's no there's no secondary to them. So they're visually something. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed and, and, and wish them the best on the people that do create something off of that or on YouTubes. Uh, I've been on TV shows that started on YouTube with four kids getting together. And so those are the great things. Right. I worry about this. I worry about society and it's changing so much. And mostly if I have a daughter, I still hope I, we're going to have a boy. <laughs> we are going to have a boy because it, it 
when people start giving away everything they have to get followers, right? What do you have? And what I mean by that is this: uh, back in my era, um, uh, bathing suits was about the level of it. And right, it right. A, it was a one-piece bathing suit, and maybe sometimes the double, but the double is a little extreme. And then it's to the point now where social media girl can be naked on it and just covering herself. Um, and that's okay. And the kids today growing up going, no, oh, that's okay. You can do that. Right. No, it's, you're giving everything away to everybody and not keeping anything for that one person or that one individual. And this is something that has nothing to do with social media or anything. It's the one thing I liked about Mona that no other girl I ever dated um, had was the fact that she was two people. Um, she was the business person at work the way she was uh, and, and that was who she was and that's how she interacted and I don't mean two people in like two-faced I mean just this is how I talk to people I work right. with my professional this demeanor is how I am with my friends and then I got something that nobody got over here mm. I was the boyfriend and it was a completely different thing where I grew up thinking no no you should be the same to everybody it's true and not true. Right. You should be polite to everybody. Right, right. And you should be kind to everybody. And you should, you know, try to be a good person to everybody. But it doesn't mean you get to give everybody everything. Uh, keep something for yourself. And, and I worry about kids today that the, the boys today are just giving away their whole bodies and just going, this yeah. is all that I'm about. Because if you like how I look, and then I meet these kids and there's just nothing behind it. Right. Um, or the girls that are giving away everything in their bodies and, and, and doing basically uh, Playboy. Yeah, they're for followers. Yeah, porn. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow, then what value are you going to give now that you've given everything? Everything. That's a great point. I love that point because there's, no, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Now, as a father, this will make you, uh, this might make you feel a little bit better. I, uh, so I was talking to a gentleman and uh, he's a demographer. He keeps track of demographics, right? And so he, uh, in the last two years, uh, driver, li driver licenses have fallen drastically because the younger generation aren't getting driver license. You know, for, for you and I, it was a rite of passage. We couldn't wait. Man. Having your driver's Man. license was like Man. a big deal. Yeah. Hurry up and get that, buddy. My girls are 16 and they were so lax about getting their driver's license. I just, it just blew me away. Their whole generation is like, because of Uber and Lyft and things like that, they're just not in a hurry about it. Now, what the demographer said is that because they're not getting driver's license, they're not making out in cars, teen pregnancy is at all time low. Okay, that's great. <laughs> That's great. All right. Hey, <laughs> yeah. So we got something good there. Yeah, but isn't that interesting though? That, is that, interesting. that driver something as uh, that as weird as driver license yeah. leads to teen pregnancy. But it makes it makes yeah. sense because I can tell you, yeah. I, apartment you know, on wheels. Apartment on wheels, <laughs> man. There was a lot of making out uh, in, in cars. So at that uh, that uh, when this guy we'll told me that, that I was thinking, show. yeah, that that would be a different <laughs> show. But you're absolutely right. When, when you are half naked, or in some cases, you know, naked. What else, you know, I mean, what are you going to do next? I mean, it, it, it's just incredible. And, yeah. and it's one of those things where social media doesn't have any boundaries. They're, it's, they're not saying, hey, that's X-rated, so we're mm -hmm. not going to allow right. it. You know, they're allowing... Independent. Yeah, they're allowing the individual posting that to say, to decide whether it's G-rated or X-rated. And, and anyway, so that's, that's just such a valid point. I, I, I want to say this. Go ahead. We're, we're not being old farts in this sense. What we're trying to say is, is keep some value. Yes. Keep something uh, for later um, or for that person. or, or, or Something or special. Something. You, yeah. you can't... Uh, this has to be more about you instead of trying to get something. Right. Uh, I understand building a following creates something. I understand that um, I posed and, and did my thing. Here's the one thing that I guess I could relate it to is I'm not the kind of guy that's ever in a gym in a tank top. You can't find a picture of it. I, you know what? I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because you're covered from head yeah. to toe. Yeah. And that was one of the things I wanted to ask you. What the heck is that? I mean, you, you know, ready? Kai you Green does the same thing. Anyway, I'll tell go you ahead. why. Um, with the martial arts, it is something where I don't do a lot of videos or anything because that's my spiritual time to fight. Okay. Uh, with powerlifting, it is my time to be aggressive in that sense. Uh, but when it comes to bodybuilding, it's an artist. 
and I'm creating a physique, but I've never, ever created a physique for anybody else. Mm. And so that's why I've got to stay what I did and stay true to what I believed in, in training and believed in uh, what not to do. Right. Um, because I always created the physique how I wanted it to look. And it was funny because it took the industry years to go, okay, he sells to the mass market because of how he looks and his body is. And now they're catching up and making classic physique again. And they're doing yes. this kind of stuff again. And they're going back to that kind of physique. Um, and, and I remember Arnold said this to me, uh, not Arnold, Joe Weider said this to me. I was 21 years old, I did a cover, and when I did the cover, uh, he was there with me on the cover shoots, which was the greatest thing in the world, but he goes, you look great, don't change it. Stay like you are. And I was already wanted to do that. I wanted right. to stay how I looked. Um, but hearing that from him and then Robert Kennedy out of Canada, the guys that really ran the industry, right? I said, I don't need these judges that I don't know. And the judges don't, they're telling me, this is what you need to look like. Okay. Right. Yeah, sure I do. Hey, a um, lot of these judges <laughs> who don't train, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't train. And, and their opinion means nothing to me because I'll make it without a title. Right. I'll make it if I don't win. Right. I don't care that. I'll, I'll make this. Right. Um, in something, in some angle, I'll go. And it's not that I won the universe that made me famous. So you guys got to stop that. It's not that that... You win the universe, you get covers, you get the millions, and then you're famous. It doesn't work that way. A lot of guys won the universe. And you don't even know who they, they are. They don't even know who they are. It, it, it's so not the titles. It's so uh, not that. But my point was that I cover up because I'm, it's an art show for me, and I'm not in the gym to show it. I'm in there to work it, and it's my meditation time to create a piece of art that I like. And when I want to show it, and this is what I want to get back to you guys, long story short, I will show that. Um, when I'm guest posing and getting paid for it, right? Uh, or for the cover of the magazines and getting paid for it. Um, any other time, I won't show it because it's not for everybody. It's for I me. like that. I like that. Does an artist show a painting before it's done? No. No. Why? No. It's, it's not done. Artwork. It's, it's not art, done. Yeah. When it's done, I'll show right. you. And so on stage, it is done. When the cover of the magazines, it's done. In the gym, I'm doing the work. Yeah, I like that. You don't that. need to see it. And like then that. it's it's just I'm just so old school that that. The gym's supposed to be about that, and it's changed so much. And I understand that, and I have to change with it in a sense that it's all about people taking pictures while they're doing it or, or doing workouts, videos, and stuff. And it's we used to go into the gym without phones because we didn't have cell phones. Right, right. And, and you go in there, and you get the banter and the talking smack yeah. with your boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's why we like 4 o'clock. There's no music at 4 o'clock at Gold's Gym. We do not turn it on. Thank you, Gold's Gym, for that. Um, and we get a train talk smack and kick ass. And that's what I love and that's why I cover up. Do not show it. I love it, I love it. And you know what, so, so okay, so I think it was uh, you and uh, Heath Evans working out and uh, it was uh, uh, an Instagram post and you guys were just talking about doing your incline press, yes. all right? And, and you talked about bringing it down to about right here, right? Okay. And, and my point being is, I was going, wow, you know what? I don't think I do that with my incline press. I, you know, because I, 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 flexibility. I, well, I, I work out by myself. Okay. And, and so I don't have a buddy to say, hey, you're doing it, you know, you, you need to be doing it like this, right. you know? And so my point being is those little uh, clips on Instagram are helpful. Thank you. Yeah, so Thank you. Thank yeah, you I love that. that. I love that. So I, I mean, I go there, I watch it, and, uh, and, 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 and the other day, um, and see, I was, uh, where was I? Um, we were at the movie theaters. I love popcorn. And, <laughs> and not only do I love popcorn, but I'm hungry. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm thinking, oh man, I, I am gonna just devour popcorn. And so what I did is I went, I grabbed my phone and I went to Michael Hearn and I just focused on your abs. And not that my abs are anywhere near that, but that's, I figure, what do I want more? Abs, popcorn abs, popcorn. And so I just focused on those abs until the, uh, what do you call it, uh, motivation for popcorn disappeared. So, thank you. Okay, well, I'll, get, <laughs> I'll do more ab shots. <laughs> but, um, you no, know, I'm glad, I'm thank you, thank yeah. you. Because the small amount of that is so cool. And that's, that's the one thing I love about social media uh, is that, um, 
to hear somebody go, listen, uh, I flew from Germany to Gold's Gym Venice to spend an hour with you and, and have you train me is such a different world than where we were 30 years ago. Right. Um, that everybody now comes and, and they know where I'm at and they want to train with me. Um, and there's people that want to train, it's great. But the people that come to me and go, you don't know me, never met you, followed you for years. I was 400 pounds. Uh, I saw you on American Gladiators. I said, I'm going to start working out. During the show, he said, forget it. He got on the floor, started doing crunches. I met him two years later. He was 220 pounds. Wow. And it was purely off of, um, he got motivated from something I did. Right, right, right. And so it's, one thing I want to say is that is so incredible to be able to do what you do and, and love what you love and then to change somebody yes. that you never meet, which is the coolest thing in the world. And, and the only thing is I'm not one of these people, I'm not going to lie to you and go, I wake up at three in the morning to motivate you. Right. I'm not going to say that. That's a lie. I wake up at three in the morning because I want to go train. Right. I love training. Um, I don't go in there and lift heavy weights because I have an ego. I like the mental battle within myself. I love that fight. I love knowing that, you know what? I kicked I can do it. Yeah. Right. And again, I'm saying this, that I didn't do it for you guys or the fans that are watching this. What I like is that I can stay true to who I am and not get up in the morning going, I am your guy that you need to follow because I'm going to motivate you. That's right. I don't believe that's true. Right. And I think that people that do that are phony. And I believe that there's a huge amount of people that are on social media that are phony. Right. Um, and we meet these people. And I'm like, wow, you're nothing like the guy that you're preaching on thing. And it's, it, we're too old, or at least I'm too old to fake this shit. Right, right, so right. So who I am is who I am. Right. And, 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 and I do what I do because I love it. And that alone motivates people. Right. And I love that aspect of it and how that flows. Yes, absolutely. And again, that's going back to what I said earlier. You have to be good at something. And, and, and it, you know what? There is... Um, Years ago, when I was on Fox News, they had me do a story on two teenage girls, and they had a gazillion followers, and they were doing these things called haul videos. And so haul videos was, these girls would go out, and they'd have a shopping spree, and they'd haul it back, and their videos were just them going through the hall. Hey, I got these earrings, I got these shoes, I got this, and that's what they were good at. They, and, and so they had amassed so many followers right because they were giving out fashion tips and makeup tips and they're teenage girls all right they're still in high school they had uh, i believe close to like a million followers or subscribers on youtube which is that's a thing huge. that's huge and and they and they were getting endorsements from different people <laughs> hey hey and, and stuff like that but my point being is that's what they were good at right. and they loved doing it they weren't you know they weren't doing it for the followers they got the followers because they were doing it they, they, they were doing something that they liked and that they were good at and they were having fun, just like you're talking about. And that's what a, pe a that's lot of people forget, is. is that you have to deliver value. And value is different for everybody. Yep. I mean, I would never thought that uh, two teenage girls talking about what they bought would be that valuable, but it was to a bunch of teenage girls who didn't have anybody else that they could share that that, that energy that with. with yeah 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 it's something passionate about so, so yeah absolutely so so you don't do it just like you were saying you don't do it because you want to motivate people but you as a byproduct yeah you motivate people because you're doing something that you love and you're having fun and people going man i want part of that energy so but that's my point being is you have to be good you yeah. have to, to deliver something of value we're just saying love it Love it. Do it. Do it for what you want to do and why you're doing it, not for the money yeah. and fame. Yeah. Don't do it for the money and fame. Because you know, that you, will destroy you. That will destroy you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You'll never be happy. How many people do we know that are filthy rich and filthy famous and they're still unhappy? Yes. And, and, and you see it every day. I mean, look, uh, I don't know uh, uh, Charlie Sheen uh, personally, but and, and I think that what happened to Charlie, people said, oh, you know, he had that massive blowout on you know that public yeah. massive blowout because he was on drugs and i'm not no no i think he had that he was on drugs because he was no longer fulfilled mm -hmm. he had he's he's famous he he's rich but he was Beyond unhappy rich. yeah right. he was unhappy doing what he was doing now check him out he is sober he's clean he's doing the exact same thing on on another network essentially playing the same character his name is still charlie 
and and but it's I think it's produced by his brother and there's different management he's you know he's enjoying himself again whatever happened on on whatever he just got burnt out he didn't like the people he was working with whatever and I think it finally manifested himself in this massive public it's blowout. Yeah. yeah, that's. And, and, and so we're in Hollywood, so we see. I, I, you know, for me, I see a lot of that, and and I've seen some of the richest people um, that are famous and good looking and have everything going for them, and they're just completely unhappy. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, then there's the opposite of people who have nothing. Oh, I got some around. And. They're happy as all get out. And they motivate me. Yeah. And those guys motivate And they're not trying to motivate me, obviously, because they're, they're trying to make it through life and they're, trying, and they're struggling. Right. And they're doing their thing. But they show up and, and hang out with us. And I see them and, and like some of my training partners. Um, and they're always happy and they're so joyful. And, and it's just like, my gosh, I need to level to that. I need to get to that level. Yeah. Because they're always happy and stuff. And, I, and it's, a, it's an incredible, cool thing to see somebody that's actually living it, appreciate life to the fullest, um, and not selling out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love it. We're going to end on that note. It's been a blast. Mike O'Hearn here at the castle. Mona, thank you so much. And, and, and uh, you know what? It's been a fantastic time hanging out here. Thank you, brother. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, man. It's always good. And, and uh, if we don't see you before, we're going to see you in Columbus. See you in, yep. Uh, when it? Our, annual, the, our the annual meeting. Arnold? At the Arnold? Not the, the Olympia. You're going to be at the Olympia. Oh, Olympics. yeah, yeah, yeah. Olympia's yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. See, we're September, traveling so right? We travel so much, now we don't even know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'll be at this year's Olympia. I haven't been there in a while. And so, uh, anyway, so yeah, we'll be there. So, I'll see you there. All right, man. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Is it